Yeah, thank you very much for the kind introduction and also uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, having me here. I'm really proud and happy to uh, be part of this conference and more generally to be part of this very vivid and nice uh, community, be part of it. So what I'm uh, going to talk about today is joint work with Clemens Seemann uh, from Oxford University. It's uh, kind of a complementary um, approach uh, or treatise of measured chroma of Hausdorff convergence, uh, as you have already heard by Olaf Müller today, and what will you, you will also hear uh, from Stefan Suhr later in the week. So what I will be concerned with is uh, rather uh, Lorentzian structures, but also Lorentzian structures which are additionally equipped with a reference measure. And in particular, uh, I I'm uh, interested in studying uh, their convergence. So as I have uh, outlined, there have been uh, recent very promising approaches both by uh, Olaf Müller and Mingut Sissur uh, independently, which came out more or less uh, at the same time to Lorentz Chrome of Hausdorff convergence for Lorentzian structures in whatever sense you uh, interpret them, either in the um, a little bit older uh, approach by Kunzinger Seemann or in the um, pretty new uh, approach of Mingut Sissur. And uh, so, but uh, adding a reference measure to uh, any notion uh, to notions of convergence is uh, convenient and useful uh, from various perspective. So uh, the first motivation for me is, is that the notion of TCD spaces um, by definition uh, comes with a reference measure. And so any notion of convergence for those spaces should naturally uh, involve the reference measure. And uh, second, even uh, if you are only concerned with uh, gromov hausdorff convergence, not measured gromov hausdorff convergence, having a reference measure at your disposal uh, is a useful thing because uh, the genuine form of the uh, Gromov precompactness theorem for metric spaces, let's say, it tells you about uh, some, is, is a statement uh, like something that uh, you have precompactness of spaces which have a sort of uniform covering property. And once you can verify uh, something uh, in, uh, with respect to the reference measure, then you automatically get this uniform covering property. So having a reference measure at your disposal is really something uh, useful. And this uh, goes by, uh, by the name or the concept essentially of doubling. So here's the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I will talk about, uh, give you a brief uh, introduction into the theory of, uh, new theory of bounded Lorentzian metric spaces. Then I will pass over uh, to normalize bounded Lorentzian metric measure spaces and discuss basic property of the, their isomorphy. Um, then I will outline to you a uh, nice consequence of this notion of isomorphy, namely a Lorentzian version of the Gromov reconstruction theorem based on which I will introduce various notions of uh, convergence and outline the relation, as well as give you an outlook over uh, possible applications thereof. So uh, this uh, slide is sort of, uh, uh, serves as a black box uh, for what a bounded Lorentzian metric space uh, as introduced uh, recently by Mingut Sissur is. I do not want to go into too deep details here. I just want to provide you with, with, the, with the basic definitions and the most important properties. Uh, in the next slide, I'm going to give you some examples and uh, present you some pictures so that you can uh, have maybe a better uh, intuition or vision of what these uh, bounded Lorentzian metric spaces really are. <laughs> so these spaces by default are tuples uh, satisfying the following three conditions. So uh, the first one is the reverse triangle inequality for the time separation tau. This is essentially evident that you should uh, care about this. The second uh, is a compactness property. Uh, so first you require that uh, your time separation function is continuous with respect to some uh, topology. Not only that, you also ask for a compactness of super level sets for strictly, uh, for strictly greater than zero epsilon. Yeah? And the third point is a topological property which links the time separation function to the topology of your base space is that it separates points, essentially. Yeah? So uh, note that uh, by uh, essentially as, an, as a direct consequence of the, of the compactness of these, uh, these sub-level sets, uh, the, the time separation function on a bounded Lorentzian metric space is always bounded. So, the, and this justifies the name of, uh, the choice of name for bounded Lorentzian metric spaces. Yeah. So there are uh, 
very nice properties. In fact, I don't want, want to go into too much detail because I think uh, Stefan does in his talk uh, on Friday. But let me just mention uh, some of them which will turn out to be useful. So the first one is the, uh, the existence of at most one uh, point, I0, which we call space-like boundary, which is at zero time separation distance to any other point in the space which in particular implies that every other point, which is distinct from the space-like boundary, has a non-empty causal uh, chronological future or a non-empty uh, chronological past. And this is a very useful property um, because once you sit in such a point, uh, uh, which is not the space-like boundary, this allows you to go a tiny bit into the future or a tiny bit into the past, and so, so that you sit in, uh, inside a nice, a nice compact set with respect to the underlying Lorentzian structure. Yeah. Then uh, further, a very deep and very highly sophisticated study of Miguzzi and Sur shows that such a topology is, as in fact many uh, nice and desirable proper properties, namely it is locally compact, separable, and in fact completely metrizable, so it's a polished space, and uh, if you adjoin the space-like boundary to the space, it's even compact. Yeah. You can think of this as being some sort of uh, Alexandrov one-point compactification of your space. And uh, Minkuzzi and Suo also provide a fine study of isometries, uh, where by isometry I mean the natural notion of isometry with respect to time separation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here are some uh, examples, namely more or less prototypical examples for what bounded Lorentzian metric spaces are. The first evident one are core sets, so finite sets endowed with a causal structure, yeah, as depicted here. So uh, you usually draw in some uh, drawing time-like relations between these points by, let's say, these dotted lines here. And this lonely guy here, which is not in time-like relation to anything else, would be the uh, space-like boundary of this core set here. Uh, you can uh, also push this forward to, um, to, 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 to continuous settings, namely to globally hyperbolic space-times. If M tilde is a compact and causally convex subset of such a space-time, and you denote by uh, delta uh, del zero of M tilde the usual space-like boundary of such a set, namely the set of points which are not in time-like relation to anything else in the uh, in this set. Then if you remove this space-like boundary from your uh, uh, set M tilde you have started with, it becomes a bounded Lorentzian metric space uh, under the identification of this one, uh, one space-like boundary point with this entire space-like boundary here. Yeah? So the idea is that you constrict any points you, which are not in time-like relation to anything else just in one, in, into one point. Yeah? And the picture is, is this one here. So you have a, a causal diamond here where uh, you just remove the space-like boundary from these two uh, corners here. You can, essentially this is what you do, yes. You identify them with a point and, but in this setting it will in fact be the case that here the space-like boundary essentially by definition is not part of your. You would also identify them, yes. And so the, there is a natural question, okay, how the, does this theory of uh, bounded Lorentzian metric spaces relate to the theory of uh, Lorentzian length spaces as axiomatized by Kunzinger and Seemann? So there is a uh, one, so it's still an open question whether there's any one-to-one -one correspondence between these two uh, notions, but one uh, direction is kind of easy to see and it's essentially uh, contained in a paper of Ake Hao, Cabrera, Pacheco, and Solis. I'm uh, sorry for my Spanish folks if I miss, if I confuse uh, first and last names, uh, so please ex ex excuse if I did so. But the uh, essential moral of this is that, that the same statement as uh, in the second bullet point here holds true if you replace globally hyperbolic space time by a strongly causal Lorentzian length space. Yeah, so uh, causal diamond with uh, space like boundary removed. Uh, in such a, let's say, if, if it's compact, uh, then it is uh, automatically um, a bounded Lorentzian metric space. Yeah. Okay, I hope this gives you a pictorial uh, example or way of uh, thinking about these bounded Lorentzian metric spaces. So let me turn to uh, endowing them with a measure, in fact. So a bounded Lorentzian metric measure space uh, is a triple M tau M consisting of a bounded Lorentzian metric space, M tau, 
um, endowed together with a radon measure. In fact, radon properties is sort of redundant if you normalize them. So I will call them normalized if the reference measure of this guy is equal to one, which is uh, up to normalization, a reasonable assumption if you sort of think of bounded Lorentzian metric spaces just as causal uh, subsets coming from causal diamonds, yeah, because they always have finite measures, so you just renormalize them to have measure one. Yeah? So, and so the, uh, the, the, the the rule or the idea which uh, in the metric setting Gromov was the one who, which promoted this idea is that uh, in order to uh, consider or to study convergence of uh, in his case, metric measure spaces, in our case, it will be Lorentzian uh, spaces endowed with measure, should be, you have to, instead of bare, um, the bare spaces, you have to uh, consider their isomorphism classes. Yeah? And what do I mean by an isomorphism here? I say that two normalized bounded Lorentzian metric measure spaces are isomorphic if there exists an isometry between the supports uh, of the respective reference measures. Isometry here again means with respect to time separation, which also preserves the measure. Yeah? And I call such a, such a map an isomorphism. Yeah? So uh, just, a, just a, yeah. Only of the support. No, only, uh, only of the supports. Exactly. I want things to, to matter only on the support of the reference measure. Okay. Yes. It turns out, uh, and this is to a large extent uh, the uh, outcome of the very detailed work of Minguzzi and Sur, that every isomorphism defined in this uh, way is actually a homeomorphism. Yeah? So it gives you some topological information, in fact. Our contribution was just uh, to, to draw, to deduce the surjectivity from this measure preserving property, which is not totally trivial because the time separation function is not the distance, but it works. You have enough compactness properties of the space. And as a consequence, isomorphy uh, yields an equivalence relation on the uh, class of normalized bounded Lorentzian metric measure spaces. And I will denote by bold M1 the totality of isomorphism classes and by isomorphism class, and I will denote isomorphism classes by these square brackets here. Yeah? So far, this is essentially, if you want, just an adaptation of the usual uh, notion of isomorphism for metric measure spaces. And as such, I mean, uh, of course, such a notion would be empty uh, unless you can deduce something from, from this. And this is essentially uh, the, the point of the uh, Gromov reconstruction theorem. So let me tell you a little bit about this. So a polynomial uh, is a function uh, on, defined on the totality of a bound, normalized bounded Lorentzian metric measure spaces, which is of this form. You uh, take the k-fold uh, product of the reference measure with itself you consider an arbitrary uh, continuous bounded function on the space of k times k matrices. Yeah, and for every uh, k, uh, oops, this should be in k, a k here. For every k tuple of points x1 up to xk, you build the matrix which consists, uh, which consists of the entries tau xi xj. Yeah? And uh, yeah, you, you integrate uh, this guy. Um, you can also write this in a little bit more uh, more con co constricted uh, uh, version, uh, just as uh, as the push forward of this pre uh, of this product product measure by the map T K, which takes which essentially does what I just told you. Yeah, it takes a K tuple of points and sends this K tuple to the matrix built from uh, from the times from the respective time separations. Yeah. It is pretty clear to, uh, it is pretty uh, uh, straightforward to see that if these two spaces are isomorphic, then uh, these, uh, the, their values at every polynomials do coincide, yeah, because you, are, you have both an isometry at the level of tau and a measure preserving uh, isometry. The, hardly, uh, the, the highly non-trivial part is, uh, what, is uh, what, goes, what is in the, uh, what in the metric case goes back to Gromov's uh, let's say uh, famous chapter three one half in his book is the so-called uh, Gromov reconstruction theorem, a uh, Lorentzian version of which uh, we succeeded to prove, namely that if these uh, these values do coincide for every uh, for every polynomial, then in fact these uh, spaces are isomorphic to each other. Yeah? 
So in, uh, if you want to phrase it in a little bit more topological um, terms, then this result tells you that the space of polynomials separates points in this, uh, in this uh, space. And he, con he contributed the proof, let's say, that we follow the metric, the metric proof. Yes, he w Vershik was the one who, sorry? Gromov, 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 Gromov has a proof. Uh, Vershik contributed the proof which, which uses a strong law of large numbers. So a, a very nice, nice, nice short proof that in fact you are able, yeah, yes. Vershik, Vershik has an alternative proof, which is which is shorter and also a bit nicer, I think. So, okay. Um, so, in the interpretation, probabilistic interpretation of this is also quite nice. So, let me maybe go go, go into uh, detail here a little bit. So, the interpretation is that if you choose IID random variab variables uh, with law m and m prime respectively, then uh, well, okay, these uh, the yeah, essentially, if you if you uh, consider these random variables here and uh, form these matrices here that I just uh, outlined to you, then uh, essentially you can you have constructed a random random corsets from these uh, random variables, and this uh, reconstruction theorem tells you that as soon as these laws of these uh, of, of these random corsets coincide at every let's say cardinality k then in fact uh, your spaces are isomorphic to each other and in fact this is an if and only if. Yeah, and this, uh, as, I, as I tried to outline uh, just a minute ago, this goes back essentially to, to the concept of so-called random metric spaces that Vershk has been uh, uh, studying quite much in, in his work. Yeah, so the moral here is that isomorphism, isomorphism Isomorphic classes of, of these normalized bounded Lorentz symmetric measure spaces are just sort of uh, determined by uh, co by equality in law of uh, random of random corsets you, you you just randomly pick from them and uh, uh, and this is in my opinion this is a very nice result which also gives some 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 value to this let's say notion of isomorphy of these bounded Lorentz symmetric spaces. Okay, so uh, based on this, let's say, nice uh, notion of uh, isomorphy of normalized bounded Lorentz symmetric spaces, you can now uh, sort of define uh, various n natural notions of convergence. Let's uh, start with one which really builds upon the, uh, this reconstruction theorem. Namely, we say that uh, sequences of bounded Lorentz metric measure spaces normalized uh, converges to this uh, to this limit if for every polynomial this uh, convergence here holds. Yeah? Notice that this, by definition of a polynomial, this is essentially a weak convergence on the space of matrices. Yeah? So it's it sh you should really think of this as, as some kind of weak convergence of the of of the underlying matrix uh, uh, bounded Lorentz metric spaces, metric measure spaces. And we term this notion intrinsic convergence because it really uh, relies on the intrinsic data uh, m, tau, and m. Yeah? So the, such notion of convergence has been uh, studied uh, for, by, by, by various people in the metric setting, Greven, Pavlo, Huber, Winter, and Gilles Mondino Savare, um, others I want to mention here. Um, it turns out that intrinsic convergence is induced by a metric, which I think is not too hard to believe because it's essentially countably many weak convergencies. So there is a metric uh, which induces this convergence. It's uh, not really useful to consider this metric. It just, I just mentioned this as a disclaimer, yeah, just, yeah. There could be, yeah, exactly, yes. Sorry? Yes. Uh, this, uh, the, uh, this, uh, or oh, maybe uh, I, th I, th I think I should, uh, yeah, so this, this metric you can construct from this is incomplete. Um, I think every metric I will consider in this talk should be incomplete. I did not check this un until the last detail. It remains open whether the, to the induced topology is Polish. This I don't know yet, but I would hope so, but I don't know yet, let's see. Okay, and so 
uh, just remembering that we had uh, sort of identified uh, causal diamonds uh, uh, as, uh, as particularly nice subsets of uh, Lorentzian length spaces, um, which naturally induce a, a bounded Lorentzian metric structure. Um, there is also a natural, let's say, definition you could give for sequences of globally hyperbolic measured Lorentzian length spaces. Namely, we say that such a sequence, I suppress all this, uh, all the metric and the causal and chronological relations here for, for simplicity. Um, if for every uh, two points in the limit space, you can find reco a, a recovery sequence in such a way that the respective causal diamonds without space-like boundary and with normalization here convergence in this intrinsic sense above. Yeah? And similarly, for every other notion of convergence I will uh, present to you, you could also uh, do something similar for, uh, yeah, we could uh, translate the convergence for normalized bounded Lorentzian metric spaces to a convergence, local, kind of local convergence of, uh, of uh, bounded, of uh, globally hyperbolic measured Lorentzian length, length spaces. No, I just say for globally hyperbolic, I just say uh, if you want to define some notion of convergence for globally hyperbolic uh, Lorentzian length spaces, then this is uh, then this is one possibility. Yeah? You just pass to causal diamonds, you, and you ask all causal diamonds to converge. I don't think so. I mean, what? Uh, I, maybe I do not really uh, really get what you uh, what you are saying. Maybe you can. Yes. I have a local classification. Yes. It's not a representative. Yes. Ah, okay. I see. Uh, yeah. I. I. Okay. That's a good. That's a fair point. I don't know whether you can uh, always choose a globally hyperbolic representative. Wait. If, if you can choose at least the only one. Let's say, uh, I, uh, yeah, after isomorphism, I think there's only one. Let's say, yeah, they are al already isomorphic locally. Yes. No, not really. Yeah. But I don't know if they will be isomorphic. Yeah. Maybe yes. I I I don't know really. I mean, this is not the this definition is really not the main point of the discussion. Let's say. I mean, yeah. I I I'm also let's say we are also still trying to really understand this. Yeah. For I think for uh, bounded Lorentzian metric spaces, the, the, this works pretty pretty fine, and we we are just trying to sort of also adapt this to um, sequences of Loren of uh, Lorentzian length spaces where you do not really have a local uh, picture, but also global picture. There are also more issues for Lorentzian link spaces, as, as, a, as I try to make clear in the next slide, for example. So the second approach is sort of uh, an adaptation to bounded Lorentzian metric spaces of a convergence that has been already uh, defined by Andreas uh, this morning in his talk. So uh, 
uh, following their approach uh, or his, his approach to, to, together with Fabio, we say that uh, such a sequence here converges to M infinity tau infinity. M infinity, if there exists a lifting, or, so, so if you can embed this entire sequence into one, let's say, large bounded Lorentzian metric uh, space uh, together with isometries uh, of the support into the uh, large space such that the push forward measures uh, converge weakly to each other. And this notion is termed extrinsic convergence here because it relies on the uh, extrinsic embedding on something into something large. So I think there is a, there, there is a drawback. Uh, so this is the drawback I, um, I spoke about when you uh, define uh, convergence of Lorentzian, uh, bound of Lorentzian length spaces in terms of local convergence of causal diamonds. Um, because, so, the so it concerns the stability of the uh, time-like curvature dimension condition. The way Cavaletti and Mondino define this, the stability works perfectly well. Um, but the way it's, it's defined here is a bit tricky because uh, let's say you are in a, in a situation where you have something, uh, so where you have a, a sequence of Lorentzian length spaces uh, whose convergence is defined in terms of causal diamonds. And you want to prove uh, the time-like curvature dimension condition for the, uh, for the limit. This requires you to prove displacement convexity of the entropy between, um, between uh, measures whose support is arbitrarily large and of arbitrarily large tau distance with respect to each other. And unlike the metric case, there's no way of enclosing uh, any, any, any compact set you like by a large causal diamond. Yeah? So uh, you, what, you, what you need uh, is some kind of local to global property of, uh, of, this, uh, of the limit space, yeah? because you can only check uh, the, or the, let's say the displacement convexity only passes to the limit within these causal diamonds. So you would need the local to global statement in order to achieve some kind of uh, stability of the TCD condition with respect to this notion as I proposed uh, in the previous slide. And this in turn requires your limit space to be non-branching or essentially non-branching, which is maybe a hypothesis which is not super, super desirable. Yeah? Under extrinsic convergence, under this, uh, so as I said, so this is a convergence for bounded Lorentzian metric spaces and you could, and for sequences of uh, Lorentzian length spaces, you could also define some local convergence of, of these spaces by looking at causal diamonds, sequences of causal diamonds. Yes, I mean, I mean this, this convergence. And I think there is, uh, there is just an issue because it's, uh, the, the TCD condition does, does not uh, a priori globalize in the limit. So there is more than one issue with, with this definition maybe, which has to be uh, resolved. So there's, a, so there's another uh, uh, approach that I really like, which uh, is the one through, the, through, a, through a distortion distance here in, the, uh, in its L2 version. The L2 distortion distance of two normalized bounded Lorentzian metric measure spaces is defined uh, by this quantity here. So you take the infimum over uh, this quantity on the right hand side over all couplings pi of the two reference measures. And I think uh, here's, a, here's a nice point where you see that it's, 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 it might be very convenient to work with structures which also involve a reference measure because then you have a way of uh, matching um, points in one space with point in the other space. So say you want to, uh, to make the, the distance between two let's bounded Lorentzian metric spaces or causal diamonds or whatever, you want to make them as close as possible. Yeah? So you would choose any, any pair of points in, in one space and any pair of points in the other space. And the way you can do this uh, evidently if you have a reference measure is to couple these points by, by a coupling pi. And you just, and then this distortion distance just tells you, okay, uh, I want, uh, I want to to minimize the the amount these two time separation functions between arbitrarily chosen uh, points in this space and this space differ from each other. Yeah, so this is the this is the idea behind this uh, distortion distance. So this uh, in the metric case, this goes back uh, by two works by Memo, Fasundo Memoli and Theo Sturm. Um, and it's uh, sort of a weak uh, replacement or an integral version of, uh, of correspondences. And correspondences is sort of the, 
the way of matching points that has been used in defining log, uh, um, Lorentz coma Faustov convergence in the works of Müller and Minguzzi Sur. And for metric measure spaces, just as a uh, side remark, this distortion distance plays an important role in applications, for example, image analysis and shape matching. So I don't know if there's any Lorentzian counterpart of this in whatever modeling of space times or so, but I would be happy to, uh, to see if so. Okay, so the last convergence, uh, oh, oops. Uh, so the standard result, tells, uh, standard result tells you that this infimum is always attained, and in fact, the, the L2 distortion distance constitutes a metric on this set, which is uh, nice to observe because uh, uh, although the time separation function does not satisfy the triangle inequality, this distortion distance does because the triangle inequality for this distortion distance is essentially a consequence of the triangle inequality for the absolute value here. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a nice way of sort of circumventing the lack of triangle inequality for the, uh, for the time separation function. In, as I, say, as I uh, try to outline, in a very similar fashion as uh, goma faustov convergence has been defined by Müller and miguzzi sur So as a definition, we can say that these uh, guys converge if this, if the L2 distortion distance converges to zero, and we call this notion uh, Lorentz L2 distortion convergence. The last uh, thing I want to outline to you is, uh, let's say, an adaptation of the very uh, original uh, approach by Kromov in his book, or a Lorentzian version thereof, which goes through the co uh, concept of parameterizations. So. As we know uh, now, there is that Lorentzian metric uh, bounded Lorentzian spaces are polished. So the, by basic theory, they admit parameterizations. Let's say by zero one, if you consider them to be normalized, and the parameter by, by a parameterization, I just mean a Borel measurable map uh, sending this unit interval to the support of M, uh, which is measure preserving. So and so the. Uh, basic picture you should have in mind is that the unit interval sort of gets mapped to this uh, causal diamond uh, here and uh, let's say one third of the mass goes here, two third of the mass uh, of the mass goes, uh, goes, goes to this light gray region. And so this is a, a very uh, rough picture of how you should think of this picture of parameterizations in this uh, framework. Usually, uh, this concept of parameterizations leads to nice representation formulas, but since you only require things to be uh, measure preserving, usually you lose uh, any geometric properties under, uh, by considering parameterizations of your space. And just for later convenience, uh, I define this uh, box distance between two Borel functions u and v defined on the unit cube. Uh, as the uh, minimal epsilon so that you can find a, a subset of the uh, Borel subset of the of the cube which has small measure and such that on the on its complement the difference between u and v is small yeah? and you use this um, box distance between uh, between functions defined on the unit cube to uh, apply it to a specific function or to to specific functions uh, defined on the unit cube, namely you post compose your time separation with parameterizations and you consider this what uh, Gromov called uh, box distance. Yeah, and this is a, just So U and V are Borel functions on on the square, yes, and this is the square. No, no, no. This is the this is the this is the zero one without q times zero one without q. Yes, thank you. So, and here the infimum of this box distance is taken over all parameterizations. So, as a definition, we could say that uh, these uh, spaces converge to each other if they are Lorentz, what we call uh, if their box distance essentially converges to zero. Yeah, let me just uh, recall that. This has been the sort of original approach of Gromov to uh, convergence of metric measure spaces by parameterizations. Yeah? Okay, and sort of uh, the main theorem uh, that we are still uh, working on is to identify all these notions of convergence for bounded Lorentzian metric spaces, namely all mentioned convergences, intrinsic one by essentially um, reconstruction theorem plus reconvergence, extrinsic one where you embed everything into a large common space, 
L2 distortion one uh, and the box distance one should be equivalent, at least on the, on the set of uh, isomorphism classes of normalized bounded Lorentzian metric measure spaces, which have a uniform prescribed diameter bound with respect to time separation. Morally, you should think of this as being, because uh, sort of the only convergence which I introduced, which is not really, uh, not a weak convergence is the L2 distortion distance. So this, this is kind of, uh, uh, this is kind of, so most convergences I have introduced to you is kind of a weak convergence or convergence of in measure. This is an L2 convergence, so you should, uh, you would generally uh, only expect these uh, these convergences to be sort of equivalent if you have a uniform L infinity bound, if you will. Yeah. In fact, there is not really a need uh, if you want to pay the, if you want to relax the L2 distortion distance to something which. Uh, would probably be called an L0 distortion distance or to people maybe more familiar with probability theory would be the key fun metric or an analog of the key fun metric, um, which, which just would take this form. I just wanted to uh, write uh, this for, uh, I give you the definition to the L2 distortion distance because I think it's, it highlights a bit better the idea and also it, it, look, it just looks a bit nicer. So. And this, uh, this would generalize corresponding, the corresponding result for metric measure space, both uh, normalized uh, as studied by Graven, Puffer, Huber, Winter, and also non-normalized as done by, essentially by Gili, Mondino, Sabale. Okay, so here's a, there's a bunch of open problems. Uh, maybe to this list you could add, find an appropriate understanding of the definition for measured Lorentzian length spaces that I just uh, gave to you. Also, um, it's, uh, it's of course a natural question to ask, okay, how is this, uh, how are all these convergencies that I just gave to you really uh, related to the notion of form of Hausdorff convergence by me good, uh, by Müller, me good, uh, if you, for example, um, let's say take over the uh, approach by Kenji Fukaya and require epsilon, the, iso the, the push forwards of the measures under epsilon isometries to converge weakly. Um, you have to be a bit careful about uh, this because the notion of epsilon isometry is not invariant under isomorphisms because it has to be um, has to be defined on the entire space, not only on the support. Um, but we would expect uh, this convergence, Lorentz comma powers of convergence plus weak convergence under epsilon isometries to imply every convergence that we uh, are considering here. The converse is, uh, is less clear, uh, maybe akin to the metric setting, you would maybe need some doubling property or so, but this uh, is still not really clear how this could even be formulated, let's say. And also, um, so there is what, what, there's also a high interest in including a Lorentzian analog of what well, we would probably call Lorentz chrome of Wasserstein convergence. This is the only con uh, this is the only distance for metric measure spaces in this uh, list I told you, which make which is in fact complete. This is unfortunately uh, precisely the one which is currently missing because you cannot just replace the distance by the time separation function because the resulting object will just not satisfy the triangle inequality. Uh, if you replace this uh, the integral by some distance, then you have to ask yourself, okay, which distance do I have to pick? and uh, in to which extent is the resulting object uh, invariant iso under isomorphisms which are defined as uh, preserving the time separation function and not the metric. So there are several conceptual uh, issues that you have to face in formulating this for, uh, uh, formulating an appropriate extension. Then uh, it would also be nice, and I think this is also what Olaf Müller has uh, uh, implicitly uh, outlined in his talk uh, to study the relation of any of these uh, uh, convergences under weak convergence of the Hausdorff measures uh, defi as, as defined by McCann Seemann. Um, also, stability of geometric properties, for example, time like geodesy would be nice to study. In general, uh, just as a warning, I don't think this will be true, so there have to be some uh, restrictions because considering reference measures can can, can essentially destroy pointwise properties such as geodesy. Yeah, so you can easily construct examples, for example, where the support of the measure just gets disconnected in the limit or so. So 
there is some uh, there is some uh, uh, care you have to take here. Globalization of these proposals uh, is also outlined by Olaf Müller would also be a natural um, uh, way to generalize these. Basically here, I think the evident uh, difficulty is that uh, is to define a way of, I don't know, of, of how you may, uh, vary the size of causal diamonds. Yeah, in the metric setting, it's evident that you can make balls around a fixed point as large as you want. For causal diamonds, uh, I don't know, there, there, there does not really seem to be a, uh, as of now, seem to be nice, nice, nice analog of this. And of course, I mean, the big, uh, the, the big and maybe most important problem in this business is to, for any of these convergences, derive a pre-compactness result, um, which really follows just, let's say, from curvature bounds, uh, such as section curvature bounds or uh, time-like curvature bounds for the Ricci curvature or something like this. Yeah, so it's uh, totally unclear that, uh, as of now, that this follows from bishop Gromov inequality or some kind of local doubling, because the way bishop Gromov works in this setting is is quite is quite tricky and involved and does not really carry over, uh, it's, uh, at least not not really clearly. Okay, I think I'm very good in time, so and I think I'm also finished. So thank you very much for your attention.